All right, what's up, y'all? It's Laker fan here. As y'all can see by the title of today's video, stage players take on the number two program team in the world. For anybody who doesn't know, this is the WR regular season. It's a comp program league. People literally pay money to get their teams in here, and I paid money to get my team in. So this is the team that we're playing in this gameplay. This is the debut of the WR matchups that I'm going to have on the channel. The team that we played is the Night Shift. They're number two, 19 and four. You can see there's a team above them, self-made. We played them twice, almost beat them as well. They're 23 and two. And then, you know, we've played teams all across this top 10. So Nonetheless, I want you guys to understand when it comes to this pro -Am series, I need y'all to show some love. So if you could drop a like, watch the videos all the way through, these are gonna be super long videos. I'm gonna be breaking down a whole lot of things and obviously when it comes to 5v5 gameplay, there's gonna be a lot to talk about. So when it comes to this pro -Am series, do not pay any attention to this intro right here. This is ranked gameplay records right here. This doesn't mean this is what they are in the WR. Their record that I showed you in the beginning is them playing literally comp teams every single time. Or if they're not comp, at least they paid to get their, you know, to get smacked. But anyway, to get into these lineup intros, to explain to you guys what we're using in this gameplay, AK is on a play sharp. You can see him on the far left. Kitchen is on a slash sharp as well at six foot five. He's our secondary ball handler. I'm at the big man spot with my finisher, then Dope is at the four with his facilitating finisher. That's a play lock. And then on the far right, we got Brody lined up at the three. He's on his facilitating finisher as well. Those are both play locks on the far right, and then my finisher is our other lock. So to explain to you guys, we don't exactly run a meta lineup. We only run three lockdowns. A lot of teams run four, so just keep all that in mind. To explain what their lineup is, they are actually a non-meta lineup as well. So they got a playmaking five at the five. That's actually very interesting. So I'm not exactly sure to this day what he even is. He might be a pure play. He might be a play lock. He might be a play sharp. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's a pure play though. He actually functioned as a decent ball handler in their offense. And they have a whole lot of ball handlers when it comes to their team. So they got a play glass at the four, facilitating finisher at the three. Then at the two, they have a rebounding wing. And then at the one, they have an inside out playmaker, which carried their offense in this game. I'm not going to give away what happened in this one. I just want you guys to watch this all the way through and enjoy this. And just understand, guys, for all my subs and stuff, these Pro-Am videos, they're going to have a different aspect to them. There's going to be a lot less, you know, me having great talking points at every single moment where, you know, I'm just going to be, you know, always talking about something that's relevant. But there will be a lot of breakdowns like this one right here, for instance. So this right here is really why I would recommend to play sides off rip because you can see AK hits the weave, gets over to the wing. He's wide open. Big man tries to jump. It's too late. So just understand this is going to be a fun little thing right here where I'm going to be breaking down a lot of this gameplay because I want you guys to watch our mistakes, enjoy our mistakes, and watch us learn from our mistakes as well as you can learn from our mistakes too if you like to play 5v5 prime. So the first thing and foremost is that our full court press got completely busted all game. You're going to watch this happen. What happens is they have two guys take it up, right? So Brody should be taking the one that's all the way over on the right right there and Kitchen should be moving over to the guy that has the orange like mushroom top or whatever you want to call it. Long story short is that didn't happen and then, you know, we just get completely busted by one simple pass. So you're going to watch every single time that we try to run that full court press. It gets very confusing because the problem is we have three locks, but with Dope, he has a really busted like uh, physical pie chart where he doesn't really have the best physicals. He has really low speed and has good strength and stuff like that. So just keep all that in mind. So the problem with that is that we have kitchen guarding wing essentially. So now I want to break down this play right here. You're going to see me roll every single time. I want you guys to watch these gameplays that we that we do throughout the, you know, the course of all these prime vids. Every single time corner is going to drop. Now, my decision right here is to either quickly dot to the corner or dot kitchen because I know and I'll actually use the mouse because it's going to be very easy to do. I know this guy's going to rotate here. So if I can't get the pass off quick enough to him, I should always be RBB every single time. And that's going to get the pass to kitchen. You can see I get hit with a bump though, and it delays me, but I want you guys to watch that. I'm trying to get better at that myself because that is the major improvement that I need to get better at it, I, flat out. You guys will watch it happen. It's, it's actually really interesting. So a lot of things that I want to talk about in this video, it's going to be rotations. Like for instance, how dope is holding down the corner right there. But then as somebody drives on him, I pick up his corner. Now I'm back to wing. It's a really cool aspect where you're going to see all types of team defense played for anybody who watches my videos and you watch me play the stage and stuff. This is a super interesting mix up as far as the content goes. And for anybody who subbed to me way back in the beginning of the year, I wanted to do like pro -Am videos. I actually had the number one prime team in the game when it came to the ranked game mode. Now that was 3v3 and 5v5 all combined, but I was having real a lot of fun. Like the first four weeks of, of 2K20 being out, I had Pro-Am Sundays where I was pretty much just dropping a vid every single Sunday. So check this out. 
Now I'm talking about rotations to the corner. So they adjust to that. You can see wing drops to corner where this like, bro, I'm talking to be a point guard in this program stuff. You need second level vision. Like you need next level vision when it comes to this stuff. So imagine AK dotted kitchen on the left wing, even though it made no sense to do it right. Then low key, he would have, he would have had a nice little dot right there. But that's the, that's the struggle with passing in this program stuff. Is it's so hard to predetermine things like that. And rotations are so hard to come across and like, you know, counter. So that's what we'll be talking about in this video as well. How to counter the rotations, how I personally counter the rotations as far as how I factor into the offense. And there's gonna be a lot to talk about. Just understand we're going to fly around in a whole lot of different topics. You're going to see me hitting those rolls on the slips a whole, a whole lot in this game where they're playing sides. They're going to just, you know, box AK off, not let him get any threes up. I'm going to hit the rolls and then it's up to AK to determine whether to pass to me or to pass to one of our corner guys. So for anybody who's new to the channel as well, I do want to mention shots top five. I call them AK. I think everybody else I call by their gamer tag, Kitchen, Brody, and then Dope as well. Yeah. So we're all good in that aspect. Just keep in mind, I call my point guard AK. Just He's one of my OGs that goes all the way back to 2K17, and that was his gamer tag. So check this one out right here. I get the defensive three second, right? Where right here, I'm looking at this. AK should probably go left corner, kitchen to left wing. And now I'm thinking, okay, we'll just double team ball because Brody's holding down these two on the wing that have really bad spacing on the right wing. And this would be just a good opportunity to double team ball. Unfortunately, I just like was a half second millisecond away from getting out of the paint and getting the double team. Loki might have been able to get a steal right there because they did have really poor spacing on that play. But nonetheless, they get a free point off that and a reset shot clock as well. And that was another unfortunate thing about that is the shot clock was running low. So in this gameplay, I want to explain to you guys, we're playing against a five out team. This isn't very like common and it's not very occasional that we run against people like that. You can see I get a bad contest right there. But this program stuff is absolutely ruled by paint beasts at the five. I'm talking dudes with pure rims. They literally just crash rebound every single time and their point guard just chucks up some really bad shots. I'm not going to lie. But what it really comes down to is shots like that are the easiest thing to come by. It's really hard to be able to just, you know, get corner dots and and really hit your bigs on the rolls and stuff. So finishing at the big man spot is a little undervalued. But as soon as I say that, you're going to see the one where I get the hop layup past their big and Honestly, that is a nice little aspect that my player brings to the table. It's just not a lot of people deal with it in the first place. So this is where we finally figured out the press break. We're going to have Brody play low, Kitchen play high. Unfortunately, it's going to give up an easy pass to where they can just get a nice break of the press off of that. But it allows us to be on the right people off rip. Now, the thing that these guys had as far as like really interesting with their lineup, they had multiple people that could set screens. I'm talking like literally two or three people that would willingly set screens on a different play on a like play to play basis. And you guys saw by the lineup intros, they had a playmaking glass cleaner, playmaking five, facilitating finisher. I mean, like, bro, they had it all. And literally everybody besides their point guard is probably a willing screen setter. So that's what made it super complicated in figuring out who to guard. So you're going to see a lot of defensive miscommunications, a lot of lapses in, in focus where we just like didn't have the right mindset. And same thing right here. I'm, I'm going to run this one back. As soon as I was talking about how we have our press break fi like figured out, Brody's playing low. Now he's thinking he wants to switch onto the ball. Unfortunately, Kitchen is not on the other wing. And then I probably could have kicked out to that right wing as well. And you see I do late. And then Dope plays nice halvesies to kind of like box that up. And then the point guard shoots us slightly contested. Listen, the thing with this pro-am stuff, and then Brody gets the reverse that gets, that gets blocked right there. I know on every play what happened, and I can't wait to explain this to y'all. But if you have any suggestions on how you want me to commentate this, or if you guys want me to switch to live commentary, I can maybe make that work, but I'm not going to lie. I do be swearing a little bit <laughs> in live in the moment. And if you do want to check out the live streams while they actually happen, my boy Dope streams every single one of these Pro-Am games because we're required to have at least one guy stream. So if you want to check that out, you can go ahead and check his YouTube channel out and you can see these happen live. I might even start live streaming these myself as I finally have my computer back. That's why the wait has been so long as far as actually making these prime videos. That was the only reason I didn't even make them in the first place. I've been, I don't know if anybody knows that I'm about to go off on a tangent real quick and nice dot by AK, but I'm going to, I'm about to go off on a different topic for like a minute or two. So I've been on a temporary laptop for the last, say three and a half weeks or something like that. Literally, as soon as I hit legend, my, my computer broke for whatever reason. And I've been on a temporary laptop that has been a complete pain <laughs> when it comes to the videos that I've been recording. And some of y'all may not have noticed as far as like my content goes that, you know, there's been a quality drop off or anything like that, or just that I've spent so much more time per video to make the videos happen. But it has been frustrating with, you know, being on a new laptop, the, the quality and the processing and stuff like that's so much lower. So anyway, 
now that I finally have my computer back and it's fully upgraded, I put like a thousand dollars more into it. Now that I have my computer back, I'm be looking to stream these like Pro-Am games a whole lot more. Possibly, I'm not gonna lie, it might distract me quite a bit as well. But at the very least, the Pro-Am vids are finally here. But I do have a couple topics that I wanted to talk about because I know this is gonna be a long video. So I wanna explain to you guys as you're watching this and then I'll just kinda transition between like back and forth between commentating the game when I see things that I wanna see. Like that right there, it was a great display of how our like press should actually work where Brody guards ball, kitchen drops out to the other wing, I'm on screen setter, easy as that. Now with all that said, that alone was something that we still had to struggle to figure out. It, don't even get me started on, you know, like corner drops, uh, like early, like Dope kind of did right there, or us not playing proper sides defense as far as like trying to stop their point guard. And you're going to see all game. Their point guard was just straight up going off. You can see AK gets the ridiculous dunk for a play sharp right there. He should not be finishing those. But with that said, I do have a topic that I really want to talk about. So I have, a, I have a notepad of things that I wanted to talk about in this gameplay. And number one, and the most pressing thing throughout all of the things I could talk about with this program stuff is the garbage tendency glitch that's in this game. So if anybody does or does not know about it, essentially, a lot of these comp program players, they've been on this stuff since like day one of the tendency glitch being a thing. And now it's no longer a thing. So even if our team was to try to cheat the system and get the tendency glitch ourselves, we literally can't. It's not even in the game anymore. So keep all this in mind as far as like what we're playing against. Every single team that's comp in this Pro-Am stuff, and you can see nice little uh, rotation as far as the defense goes. I want to talk about this real quick though. Every single team that we play has glitch tendencies that help them steal the ball better, get less reach-ins, play better passing lanes. Their point guard has driving dunk tendencies as well, where he gets more, it's pretty much, they have a BP build at their point guard, which is a finishing and shooting, and he gets more contact dunks, gets more draw fouls. It's a complete bailout, but Nonetheless, I do want to break this one down right here. So you can see nice overload defense. They have two guys on the left where low key, if AK just held them both down and Kitchen rotated up a little bit, it would be cool. But obviously AK has a little bit less defensive ability. So keep all that in mind. But nice overload defense right here where they have three guys on the left. Obviously everybody flexed the zone pretty well in this situation. And you can see that it was actually like very good defense. And then I drop and sink whenever I see like bad spacing from their perimeter. And then he gets the green in my face. But to talk about the spacing as far as like a five out team goes, because that's what we're playing against. Keep in mind, the spacing as far as the paint goes is really good. Like the like the pro of five out is the fact that the paint is always open. Anybody can cut. And it really takes advantage of our low defense point guard like AK right there, where he just cannot defend the interior for his life. And really the perimeter either, as you see right there. He has one defensive badge as our point guard, but we need offensive firepower from our PG. So anything that comes with the bad defense, it kind of just is what it is. I would like for him to have, you know, 10 defensive badges or something like that, but the struggle is what it is. Like I said, he if he did have defense, he wouldn't have any finishing and it, you know, negates that driving dunk he had earlier. I would say though, the thing with this team program stuff is you low-key don't even need the finishing from your point guard, if we're being honest, because a lot of teams, what they do with their pure rims, right? And you can see he hits me with the ISO right there. That's a playmaking five. A lot of teams with their pure rims, like I was trying to tell you all the meta is, is that they'll go out, they'll go out here and literally, if the point guard's getting locked up, just post fade, like you see on the toxic 2v2 stuff, right? Where the point guard's gonna post fade. You can see AK hits me on a nice roll right there. Point guard's gonna hit the post fade. Big man drops down. He grabs every single rebound, or at least tries to. I like to think I compete pretty well as far as the rebounding goes, but keep all that in mind. Like I said, the whole toxic like double bigs thing, it's a thing in, in this program stuff, except it's the point guard post fading instead of an actual post score. But with all that said, the PGs have literally like 93 post fade and the BP builds have like 90 hook as well. So it's like, it's still the same exact thing and it's super hard to contest and it's super hard to deal with. So that's why you see a lot of teams not really run this five out set that these guys were. But you can see right here, nice rotations. And that was one of the very few nice rotations that we had. You can see I left dope with the two on like the two on one right there because they were both standing in the same exact spot still hits like the 40 or 50 percent contest ridiculous but to get back to that whole five out versus like you know the the inside big topic we obviously have an inside big but the thing is that we don't have like a bp build at our point guard spot and you know tit for tat ak hits the 44 percent contest right there so there was just two complete bs things going on looking back in this gameplay I think if Brody would have just pressed the orange hair dude every single time, it would have been a good outcome. And you can see he goes back up with that. Don't get the rebound though. And that's another thing that I'm talking about too. With these BPs, they just go in there. Even a bad shot is not always a bad shot because if I have to jump to contest it, their big has a pretty good chance of getting the rebound or in this case, it was their shooting guard. But nonetheless, I mean, locks are locks. You guys know how it is in the stage. 
big men you could consider to be like literally six foot seven even and you know to be a six foot seven lock they still have great rebounding ability obviously they can grab those boards off the corner like that ak was a little skittish with the passing i'm not gonna lie he only has one turnover to this point and i gotta say he's been really good as far as like the ball control not turning the ball over as well but in this game we did still struggle with that a little bit this is the nice perk of having the two ball handlers is we don't have to force it to one guy i personally really love running the two ball handlers but not every team has two skilled ball handlers as far as like passing vision and stuff like that goes and you guys know from watching the content ak is a good point guard kitchen's a good point guard i think kitchen has better passing vision and ak is more of the scoring machine which makes it really ironic and weird like how the builds are worked out where ak has the one with hall of fame playmaking and then <laughs> kitchen is the one that is the scoring machine machine build but for anybody who's curious as our lineup works i'm gonna explain it like this too kitchen has a build where he has like 10 defensive badges as well and has like you know still the 12 playmaking and 20 shooting as like the bp build but the problem with his bp build is he has four finishing badges on a hall of fame finishing build and it's really weird but i just want to explain that to you guys he does still have contact dunks though so it still serves as like a solid bp build option now this is where i want to talk about the struggles of front back versus sides defense I absolutely hate playing this front back stuff against rim sharps or anybody who can pop because as soon as I don't step up right here, right, I'm thinking Brody's going to get through this pick easy. There's no reason he would get stuck on this pick. And then all of a sudden, boom, gets suctioned into the screen, gets pulled back, and I look stupid for not stepping up. That's why I'm just not a big fan of not playing sides in the first place. It really, like, playing sides negates things like that from happening in the first place where you can really just avoid the point guard getting open at all and then for instance they play sides right there you would think oh i get the wide open slip it's easy read but that point guard stuff gets so tough sometimes where even on a wide open slip it, it looks wide open but then really i get like ak gets baited where it looks like i'm wide open right there and then you know the corner drops it's a good defense and then i honestly there's so much that goes into it the pass timing like for instance right there he hit me, hit me a little early i end up getting a jump shot off and still made it but you get the deal i mean it's a bad outcome brody goes for the chase down right there doesn't get it the scoreboard is very close throughout this whole gameplay I, i'm not gonna lie no team really pulled ahead or pulled behind until the very very end and i'm again i'm not gonna give away any of the outcome and stuff like that too this is something that i wanted to talk about you can see ak with a nice nice dot right there i don't know if it was accidental or not but this is one thing that me and ak have been working with I think a lot of times when he forces this full switch right here, he gets real like shot happy. He looks to shoot the ball a lot, a lot more than he probably should, even though Loki could have got the shot off right there, but he doesn't go for it. I think if he didn't pick the ball up so much in those situations, we could force the full switch. And a lot of y'all who follow my channel, you know, <laughs> my whole, like if they switch it once, they switch it back every single time with the rescreen slip. You guys know all the OGs about the rescreen slip, but that still works in the pro-am stuff. And it actually is way more functional in this where the spacing is so much harder to be able to get a wide open slip is super important in this stuff because twos are twos. Twos are worth a whole lot of points in this. Whereas in the stage, it's worth like, you know, such minimal, such minimal outcome where it's like, ah, oh, we're taking a two. Like it's, it kind of sucks. Whereas in this, if you get dunks, points are points. Points are hard to come by in this stuff, even though this is a very high scoring game if we're talking like wr or at least as far as our team goes i think our team just plays at a really slow pace in comparison to a lot of other teams and the other thing that i wanted to talk about that's on my list right here of things to talk about bro our struggles of what we are good at and bad at something that we are god awful at is fast break offense and fast break defense we are terrible at fast break game and i'm not exactly sure why i have a build that has really good speed at the you know at the five and stuff like that too i i'd like to think that i crash rebounds really well even though i only have one throughout the first the whole first half like i said there was just not a lot of missing going on in this game but for whatever reason we are awful at fast break offense and defense and it really might just be because we do play in the stage so often where you know i just think to pass the ball to ak every single time even on the breaks he just sits back never runs and we're working on that as i speak it, we've been playing a couple more games since playing this one but i knew this is the one that i wanted to make content out of so just keep all that in mind anyway end of the half right here they low-key dot us and then get the point guard you know another three-pointer off as well just a struggle guarding this dude throughout the whole game you can see he's got 24 points me and AK are combining for 24 as a group. And really, if you're talking point guard center, it's really like the same exact thing. It's just that we've given up so much more points to their point guard. So looking back at this game and looking back at, you know, what we can improve on, I think playing sides against bigs that can shoot is a must. 
Playing sides against an inside big, that's a different topic because obviously you're just giving them the roll and the take that they want to the hoop every single time. And it really depends on how great their point guard is. We didn't know what to expect with this PG. We didn't really know that he was going to be, you know, an offensive demon as well and just has like all types of aspect to their game. They have such a versatile lineup right here too. Like the fact that they can have two or three different guys take the ball up while still having like two or three different guys that can set screens. It was really interesting and really weird and like different to play right here. But anyway, nice accidental dot by AK right there. He probably should have shot. But like I said, this point guard stuff is a hard read at every moment. Like there's really no definitive answer to like what's the best thing to do on a lot of plays. Right here again, press break. It's that they have so many ball handler options, so many screen setter options. We don't know where to go exactly. And offense is actually very dominant in this when you like just have a whole bunch of play locks and a whole bunch of like point guard options and stuff like that too. And even with all that said, they still played solid defense, but I mean, they do have their point guard literally playing perimeter defense in this game, which is really the struggle of like what they're doing right here. Now, this is a no go every single time. I either need to get way better at passing, dot into the corner, or like I said, knowing that that guy is going to rotate to the corner and just hit, hit kitchen every single time. Because this wing pass every single time that I drive is my best friend. It really is the complete bailout. But when I wait too long, it allows them to rotate like that. And it becomes so problematic. You can see I'm now I'm about to get the offensive three second and I just hit a little panic pass and boom, turnover. So then they're out on the break. BP Bill gets the nice dunk. It's just like that. And Another thing that deals with this guy's point total and how much he was scoring in this game is the fact that he does guard wings. So he's out on the break a whole lot more consistently. They play the 3-2 to hide his perimeter defense to some extent. And then, like I said, they play sides on everything too. So it almost doesn't matter that they have a bad perimeter defender guarding ball because they're just going to switch everything. They're going to rotate. And then as soon as, you know, AK gets greedy and looks for shots like that, it becomes problematic. So Another thing that he knows throughout this game, he knows just like religiously and all types of stuff too, is the fact that when, when they're playing size defense, he can't look to score. He needs to either look to pass to me or pass to the corner or Loki even dot the wing sometimes. But again, you can see they're playing sides, hits me, I hit Brody, then Brody tries to, you know, hit the swing pass. It's just a lot of complications when it comes to playing people who have good defense and good rotations. They know how to work as a team. Once one guy helps, the other guy helps the helper and the helper helps the helper's helper. <laughs> it's just all types of stuff. You can see on the inbound, every single time I'm sitting back there waiting, I, I go for the slip. Again, AK is trying to dot a specific corner. And he honestly, at the very least, sometimes it's a 50-50. At least he could get off a nice pass regardless of like which one it goes to. Nice shot clock, like, you know, shot right here where the big was playing low. This is like by nature, they're going to play the paint a whole lot more when the shot clock is low because they're trying not to give up any cuts like the one that Kitchen has taken right here on the back door. But then he steps up because he sees his, his point guard get hit with a pick. We get the nice three off right, right at the end of the shot clock. And now we're bringing this back to where it should be. But again, look at this complication of like random screen setters. They got the guy at the five with the fro who's setting the pick right here. Sometimes the guy with the headband who's setting the pick. It's all over the place. Now, like I was telling y'all, we suck at fast break. This is like, honestly, just clap it up every single time that we get a fast break point because it's so, so rare that we get any break points. And really, if we're talking about it from a, you know, legitimate standpoint of like, you know, comparing our lineup to theirs, they have a whole lot more like rebound crasher options. They have a lot more outlet passers by nature because of the people that crash rebounds. And really, I mean, it's just like that. Now, you see, I will like get my occasional rebounds, but and it will happen a whole lot more as we move through this gameplay. But just quick little stat check that I want to run back on too. look at the board count. Like I was saying, they just have so many people that are crashing. They got the shooting guard crashing board. They got the, the guy, at the three crashing board. Sometimes the guy at the four crashes defensive rebounds as well. Definitely not offensive because he's like a rim sharp. And, you know, they got the whole five out set. But look at like the rebound distribution and you're going to see it at the end of the game. This dude at the two had literally eight boards and it's just ridiculous how many people they have crash defensive rebounds. And it's so hard on me sometimes because as I'm crashing the offensive rebound or even the defensive rebound, they'll crash three people on O boards or D boards. And a whole lot of people do that. Like whether it be, you know, just the people we play against or, you know, just the people we're playing against in this one. Again, you guys can see, I just got to get so much better at the rotation like defense every single time I can just hit RBB. And I need to get that through my head. Hopefully I'm doing that with this video. But every single time I get hit RBB, it's going to be kitchen on the wing and he'd be wide open. But I always try to force that pass to the corner because I'm passing to what I see, not what I know. 
and I know that I could hit that, you know, wing spot a whole lot better. Right here, it was just, I'll even run this one back. It, for anybody who doesn't like this whole rewind stuff, I'm sorry, but that's how these prime videos are going to be going. It's going to be a long, long video. There's going to be like literally almost an hour long video whenever I make these. So, with this kept in mind, I probably should have been a little further away from AK. You can see the fact that me and him are standing so close to each other makes it a really easy pass, like to, to intercept. And low key, AK, AK could have been where I'm at. I'll actually use the mouse. He could have been back here where I'm at so that I could have easily like cut through the middle right here because low key, it would have been an easy pass. But nonetheless, they just caught us lacking. And that's the one time that that hasn't worked. And then you can see, you know, I just don't get a good contest in the chase down. That's pretty rare as well. So right there, we kind of got BS'd if I'm <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. But it was still situational things that we should have improved on as far as like me and AK spacing out a little bit more. Again, panic pass, not back in transition. BP build out here just hammering away every single time because that is a really good aspect of their of their team. Their point guard is the one who's playing wing defense, but they hide his wing defense with how much the big man steps up, and then they hide how much the big man steps up with the fact that they rotate off the corner so often. Now, that is the weakness of their defense, but unfortunately my finisher himself can't finish the ball half the time, and then they get the late in transition. Long story short is, you guys can see, any team that we lose to in this Pro-Am stuff, flat out, the reason that we lose is that they just run better fast break game than we do. It's They run better fast break defense. They have better fast break offense. In both ways, we just suck at the fast break game. We're really good in the half court defense. We're really good in the half court offense. But when it comes to us running the break or us stopping the break, it's awful. It's just complete horrible. Now, again, same thing right there. They rotate someone like a different screen setter up. It's super confusing, super weird. But as long as we just stay in our spots where dope is, you know, always corner and me and him communicate the rotations that we have, then it's all good. AK gets up another like kind of questionable shot right there. I hit him on the top of the key, but you can see if, if Kitchen would have rotated more to the right right here, it would have been really good. He was trying to get to his, to his open spot. This is a case of both point guards are trying to get to the open spot, but if Kitchen just understood that he needs to pull his defender more to the right so that AK would have been wide open right here, would have been great. But you can see they're both in the same area, made it really hard to get a shot off right there. Fortunately, he dots Brody, he gets the green off. So now right before the fourth quarter starts, we got to tie it up at 48 to 48. We're back on the full court press. You can see Brody's like kind of, well, it's not exactly a full court press. And this is where we finally decided that we wanted to get more into the sides defense. But you can see he just hits a nice little, little hezzy on him. Gets pretty open, but wasn't able to hit the white. And honestly, this Pro-Am stuff, oh, it's just awful when it comes to hitting white. Like people, <laughs> they just drop so often, bro. It's, it's just ridiculous. But it, nonetheless, it's probably because it's like two-way sharps who are shooting off Hall of Fame dimer. And they still got Hall of Fame shooting on like spot up catch and shoots and stuff like that. Right there, that was a bad mistake by me. I should have just left Brody to his own. But again, I'm just trying to be more like more stressing the fact that we need to play sides because I'm still a good perimeter defender when it comes down to it. I'm not worried about getting ISO'd in a five out and definitely not when it comes to them in the driving aspect. So I'm all good with like getting ISO'd. But you can see of all the hops to miss, I don't really understand why it'd be that one. They're out in the break again. Point guard in transition. Just an absolute scoring machine, bro. Whether it be half court or like, you know, full court sets where they're on the break or where we're just like, you know, trying to defend them in their half court set. It's awful. As soon as AK touches the ball right here, I'm trying to dive. It's just a play that we do. We're pretty much trying to, you know, get the get the focus of the defense on the point guard. And then with that, I might be able to get a nice little paint take. Anyway, for a fourth quarter stat check, you can see their point guard has 33 points, seven assists, and zero turnovers to this point. Me and AK are combined for 32. So as far as the duo goes with the big man and like the point guard combo, it's still kind of neck and neck. But with all that said, they got so many different screen setters. So you can't really just chalk it up to a point guard center. There's a whole lot of, you know, two man game or three man game or even like cuts and stuff that they're doing as far as their offense goes. We are kind of put our we kind of put ourselves in a box, if I'm if I'm being honest, where it's pretty much pick and roll sets every single time. AK has to be in his bag because he doesn't have the bailout of just Hall of Fame finishing where he's just going to go in there, get a contact dunk on the big man who's still camping paint. And then, you know, just it, honestly, the BP build is a complete bailout when it comes to this program stuff. This build right here that this point guard has by far number one and best build undoubtedly when it comes to this program stuff. It's like it's the two way slashing playmaker of 2v2 where this is like the pro am one now i get another defensive three second bro another one just that's flat out just embarrassing if we're being honest that one right there no context to it honestly i'd be floating around on defense a whole lot in against these these five out guys where you can see i'm up to ball on this one and then when they run the screen i'm gonna drop off and then you know 
like we're playing the sides off the corner. Long story short is though, what I'm talking about, when I'm off ball in the five out and not guarding up top or not in the pick and pop, I definitely drop a whole lot where, you know, if I'm away from the action, I'm like dropping a lot because I have a lot of range. I have a lot of like defensive ability. So you can already see shot clock's running low. They got 2.7. They're going to chuck up a shot right here. And this right here is just suspect of a lot of people crashing rebounds on their team. They got three of them. We have three as well. But unfortunately, all three of theirs have 85 plus defensive rebound. Two of ours have like 70 and 20. So <laughs> it's kind of just that's going to happen a whole lot. And that's the problem of like the whole AK's build being in the corner on defense versus a BP build built properly is probably going to have eight defensive badges. It's going to have, you know, really good defensive rebound and stuff like that, too. It's just a struggle, like playing with this play sharp stuff. And even on top of that, like I'm saying, the play sharp is kind of subject to having to play really well with the sticks. You have to be really good at the dribbling, really good at the passing, really good at the shooting. The BP build is kind of a bailout where you can just, you know, rely on your finishing when nothing else is going well <laughs> and just deal with it like that. And the fact that he has solid defensive badges letting him play solid defense as well on the perimeter gets the 5% contest with the crab right there. Nice foul by Brody. That's another thing we need to like focus on and stress is just fouling on the fast break when you have fouls to give sometimes we don't have fouls to give and that's definitely one thing to keep in mind but anyway right there miscommunication it just they just pile up so much where honestly that's on me i should have stayed with the i should have stayed with the point guard i see the i see the dude cutting i'm just like you know we're in the two three i'm supposed to be in the paint and it just doesn't make sense for me to not take it but then you know when you see him do that it makes complete sense for me to have just stayed at home that is all on me that that's a bad mistake for me to be making especially late in this game where that puts us down by four at giving up that three right there and that was a horrible horrible situation for me to give for me to be giving up points so easy right there so right here nice shot by ak great like great shot where i was pointing this out earlier in the game where he should definitely be looking to take these little peak shots right here where the big man's stepping up he has bad perimeter defense you know he's a little bit late he's right on it if we're being honest but that's just you know subject to having bad perimeter defense it's being a little bit late and the fact that obviously he has hall of fame quick draw and he's six foot one so he he gets off shots like super quick anyway we're only down by one at this point we're really stressing playing sides defense at this point like but right here <laughs> he peeks right through the sides gap gets the you know green off on the seven percent and Loki, I want to run this back. So you can see right here, he hits the fake pass. He's picked up his dribble. Me and Brody are both thinking to drop back because we want to like together kind of play sides. But at the same time, looking back at this, whenever he picks up his dribble, we should both just be up harassing ball, trying not to let him get the easy pass off as well as take the shot away. And when the big man rolls, then I could just take him fully. You can see right here, that takes some balls to shoot this stuff right here, bro. If we're being honest, like that is a risky, risky shot to be taken. Could have been an easy fast break with Brody out as well. But it's the difference between being up by four and possibly being down by one where, you know, it's a three point for them. And we could have had two in transition super easy off that if he missed it. It's uh, That's a real, real risk right there. Anyway, AK goes for the crab again, gets the 19% contest, gets a three off. Just like that, my man is out here putting in the firepower and just getting us back in the game. And again, it's so much confusion. Kitchen gets back to the wing. They got like two different guys who can set the screen from both different sides. And, you know, we're still not really even communicating how well we're going to be playing side defense. Fortunately, he hits some like crazy stuff that he probably didn't even mean to do in the first place right there. Some some ISO head like dribbling right there. But you get the deal. He shoots the late or early off of it. It's probably just due to not getting the right dribble move as far as like collecting the ball goes. But regardless, like I said, we're back to one point game. Me and AK are over here trying to get our get our stuff done. And really, we're targeting that point guard. We're trying to put him in the pick and rolls. Unfortunately, he gets the 1% contest. That, that it wasn't the difference between him and making or missing that shot. But you get the deal. It was just real unfortunate he couldn't green that or hit the white. But we're back on defense. We got a really lock up right here. Boom, they drop a different screen setter out here. We still have to worry about the corner cuts occasionally. That left corner is what we're really worried about. He dots him. Loki could have had the shot, but I'm sure he's thinking to drive. Now, I'm trying to drop down right there because I already know that that's something that's going to happen. Like that corner cut, I was already pointing that out, right? <laughs> I was like, okay, this is looking real sus. Like this dude's definitely going to be getting targeted on defense with like the lack of height. I think AK is almost eight inches shorter and has one defensive badge with no interior defense and no block. So that is a problem. Like for him to be guarding that guy in the left corner, it's real problematic. But nonetheless, like it's just something that we have to overcome. And, you know, it's it's pretty much what we get 
penalized for for him having such great offense that it just has to happen like that so nice nice chase down block right there you can see they put me in the iso sort of low key is it wasn't so much an iso it was more like a pick and pop drive anyway i get the chase down block on that goes off of him our ball things are looking beautiful right now like we're back in this we have the lead we're gonna be just you know in the driver's seat with this stuff and you're gonna see it was low-key kind of sad <laughs> how this stuff happened late in the game you can see we're back on offense hit the slip nice dot to the corner they tried to play the lane on me brody greens it like he like he should and always does if we're being honest like him and dope are great corner shooters and you know it should be like that as well but nonetheless even if it's ex even if it's expected it's still a beautiful thing to have anyway brody gets the bump steal right there our ball again one minute left you're gonna see like you would be so ashamed of the fact that we like almost choked this <laughs> if we're being honest brody gets the corner cut right there now we're up by six with a minute left as well i mean bro we just are such in the driver's seat right now and there should be no reason for us to be giving up threes or anything like that again we're back in the sides defense i'm on left brody's right and then boom gets hit with a suction screen out of nowhere bro like i don't understand it and this is where i'm pretty much saying if we're like 100% invested in playing sides. I don't know if he got pulled into this because he dropped too low. He was trying to cross over the screen and like, you know, get into this. But I don't understand how that happens if we're being completely honest. I was playing like more backside because I thought he was going to follow over the screen. It was a really low pick, but he gets pulled into that somehow. And now, you know, it's back to the three point game. That really, really hurt. Like, honestly, the two, the two picks, and you probably saw it earlier in the game where I pointed it out too, where he got hit with the suction screen. And speaking of suction screens, you can see, you know, I, uh, he gets stuck in one right there. AK Loki had the shot. I Loki had the roll. And then I pass out the kitchen because like I said, that right there is the adjustment that I need to get better at. And I've been doing pretty good at it. You can see in this game, I, I dotted like kitchen on the wing a couple times in this, but nonetheless, you guys get the deal. Come out in sides again, right? I'm thinking me left, Brody right again. He gets pulled over to the side of the screen too much. This is what I'm talking about. Like, and Brody might be watching this, and this is the stuff I'm talking about that we need to get better at the sides defense because you have to really commit to being one side of the screen rather than trying to be on the on the right side of the ball handler. He gets stuck on the screen again because he kind of crossed over to the other side. They get the three off super quick again. That's the last thing we need in this situation. AK almost gets a three off right there. And honestly, that probably would have been dagger if he could have made that. But at the same time, you don't want to get an early shot too much because you can like burn some clock. Then they get the fast break. He tries to be on his Kobe stuff and hit the fader right there. And then they get the O board, kick out to him again. Green, boom. We just choked an easy lead that we could have got out of this game with super cleanly. Only 5.7 seconds left on the clock. And we're setting up for a possible buzzer beater right here now this is the same thing as soon as ak touched this i'm probably going to try to roll where i'm just trying to you know get a last second buzzer beater off on the shot clock unfortunately man oh this stuff really grinds my gears ak hits me a little bit early if he hits me a little bit later i can just hold x glide into this dunk and hope for a contact dunk hope for a foul something like that i really could have dotted the corner for being honest right here but with 2.5 obviously i'm a little fixated on the rim and I'm not going to lie. I, I, I would never try to go hero ball and try to get the game winner just out of spite of somebody else getting it. I would absolutely dot that corner if I felt it was the right thing to do. But right there, I just felt like we were a little pressed for time. It was going to be a struggle. Now their point guard heading into OT has his playmaker takeover. We have to be on our stuff as far as defending this stuff, bro, because we're already getting torched. This dude has 50 right now going into the fourth quarter or going into overtime after the fourth. And we are just straight up, like I said, getting torched. You can see AK hits me on a nice roll right there. Really delayed pass, but it is what it is he was trying to avoid passing lanes you know get get it in as clean as he could but bro pay attention to what the score is right now 70 to 72 you guys watch this when you watch all the way to the end of the ot so finally finally we got our sides defense figured out i was telling y'all in the in the video the other day that we just were not playing very good defense against these guys where you know like their point guard just went off for so many points we had so many adjustments we should have made as far as how we were playing defense i wanted to be playing more sides it it's just something that to deal with like you know the way that we play defense where a lot of people whether it be cook playing lock or brody playing lock we don't really like to be playing sides too much sometimes you also worry about sides because it gives up easy slips right here and we don't really have the most reliable corner defender with ak to drop on the slip so say for instance he slipped right down the middle right here and ak had to play the rotation it gets real tough and if it if we force the rotation to be the dope every single time it gets really easy for them to just dot that right corner or dot the right wing when kitchen tries to drop to the corner when when dope drops 
And then even if, you know, they do that, then Brody is super far away from right wing as well. So if, if we were to do a rotation right here, it has to be left corner. But AK is not really a viable, you know, interior defender. So it's very hard to, to involve AK in the, in the rotations and stuff like that. Right there, Brody just pulls it down in the fast break, tr not trying to make any mistakes or anything like that. AK peeks through the through the late help as well. And just like that, we are back in comfort zone, 78 to 70. We got a three possession lead. It, at this point, bro, if we were to choke this, this is just awful. <laughs> anyway, AK, uh, there was a little misconfusion like right there where AK probably should have stepped up a little bit, but then at the same time, I should have been a little further back. It was just really confusing. And like I said, the way that these guys ran their offense was so hard to figure out. They had so many different ball handlers, screen setters, just all types of like weird, just misunderstandings and, and just confusion all around. Kitchen goes for the drive right there, gets blocked. Like I said, he has the BP build, so he's just going for the dunks in drive situations like that. <laughs> he throws the outlet pass and it goes off the backboard. That that right there sucks honestly they might have stayed in this game if it weren't for for that happening right there i'm gonna come to ak fake pass get the clean like you know pass off to him we're gonna try to run our offense a little bit slow right here not really force anything but if something finds it and as soon as i say that <laughs> you know it goes for the very questionable shot right there but it is what it is i pulled on the o board again trying to get this to ak just burn out some clock only eight seconds left on the shot clock i hit the roll he hits me unfortunately again a little bit early and I still can't really blame him for that what I need to start doing as far as my rolls go is stop holding X as I roll I'm sure a lot of you bigs you guys probably know where I'm at like where I'm coming from with this where when you roll you're holding X just in case for the lob just in case you you know you're trying to get the quickest dunk off possible you're trying to just you're trying to just make yourself useful when it comes to the finishing aspect but unfortunately in this pro-am stuff if AK has to hit me early I need to be more available in the sense of not taking accidental jump shots every single time because that is super problematic dude's cold shoots the early at this point you guys already know it's over set 81 to 70 they're gonna start quitting out soon that's all for the video i hope you all enjoyed if you did feel free to drop a like sub if you're new turn on the noties all that good stuff let's try this video a thousand likes in the first 24 hours i hope you all enjoy this program content if you have any adjustments that you want me to make as far as maybe cutting out the the fouls and stuff like that cutting out you know the transitions between passing the ball in maybe just cut out free throws stuff like that let me know or if you want me to post live commentaries of this let me know that as well i could show you just highlights condense this to like 10 minutes and you could kind of get the gist of it but then still be kind of left with like confusion as to like what our problems are what our pros are what you know the guys that we were playing against were doing well you could see their point guard went for 51 points eight assists had three steals was playing okay like perimeter defense because they still had him on the top on the wing and then had zero turnovers bro that is unacceptable like the fact that we played such me and brody played awful defense in this game if we're being honest and again we just failed to play good size defense look at the discrepancy as as far as the rebounds go too they just crashed so many different people throughout the course of this game their shooting guard had nine rebounds their small forward had three and their bigs both had one even their point guard had a rebound as well but Anyway, that's all for the vid. Like I said, if y'all enjoyed, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties. All that good stuff. Let's try to do to a thousand likes in the first 24 hours. If you made it to the very end of this, vid this video, put LA in the comments to show your support that you made it all the way through. Other than that, I hope y'all enjoyed and take it easy, man. Peace.